Hello each and everybody, this is Nord. Today I'm going to show you my latest Docker related project, which is the Docker Borg Backup Container. What this basically is about is it's a Debian based container which includes the Borg Backup tool, which is a great backup tool for Linux. And it also includes a little wrapper script wrote by myself, um, which will connect to the Docker API to determine which containers are running on the system and which volumes are mounted to these containers. And then it will create um, a backup archive for every single container, including all mounted volumes by default. So this is this container is in a very early stage, so it's alpha or proof of concept state. So we have still a lot of to-dos and limitations on this. But also we have a lot of features which I just wanted to show you. Um, so you might give me some back, uh, some, some feedback and stuff. Um, so yeah, let's dig right into it. I already prepared a little demonstration environment. Um, so let's have a look at the compose file that we are using to configure our backup container. Um, because there are a few things that we have to configure before running this. So as you can see I'm using the public image I'm, uh, I've uploaded to Docker Hub. Um, and then we start with a label configuration. So um, to use this backup technique, I would say. Um, there are two types of configurations that are possible. The one is, one is the label configuration, which is uh, the configuration per container. So all labels are just used for the single container. While the environment configuration on the Borg backup container itself are basically global configurations like um, parameters for init and create of Borg, um, which volumes to skip by default, like for example um, proxys, temp, all this stuff will be skipped by default. Um, yeah, and so on. So let's get back to the top and see what we are configuring here for this single container. We are telling them that we don't want to back up our backup container, which makes sense somehow. Um, we can also configure some more stuff. We can say we only want to back up files or volumes, or we want to skip specified volumes, or we want different um, options when creating the backup. And so this is basically all we can um, do in this state of the container. Um, of of this image of the backup container. Um, yeah, so after configuring this label, we also need to tell Borg where to put its backups or its backup um, repository. In this case, we are just using um, slash backup, which is um, just a volume mounted to this container. We also could use um, an external Borg server um, which we con could connect to over SSH. Yeah, so we have um, the volume for the backup repository um, and a volume for Borg, which Borg stores its config, its um, cache and um, keys if you are using encrypted uh, repositories and so on, and also SSH keys if you're using SSH. Um, I made a soft link in there so you can easily configure your SSH key and stuff in there. Um, yeah, so the next very important part is that this container needs to um, have a connection to the Docker socket because, as I said, my um, Python wrapper script will connect to the API and read out information. And the next thing that's also kind of nasty <laughs> is you will need to mount every um, 
volume uh, source path of your host um, to this container so that we can create um, actually a file based backup of this um, yeah, directory structure. So if, by default, this would be a varlib docker. Um, in this example, I'm just using um, some uh, local volumes right, um, right in to my uh, in my um, project directory. So yeah, so basically, these are the three things that we'll need to run um, this container. We need to configure this uh, um, Borg repo um, environment variable. And we need to set up, um, or we might need to set up um, a local volume for the backup. But we definitely have to connect the Docker socket and um, the volume paths to this container to make it work. So this is why I would say that this uh, well, this container is not concepted uh, or built to run the background and automatically uh, run every day or so. Um, you really should just trigger this um, docker run if you want to do a backup. So this um, makes it even then a little bit more secure. Um, okay, anyways. Let's see what we have here running on the system. I've prepared uh, four containers, which are just boring Nginx containers. Um, which have a little bit of configuration. I can show you. I hope you all are familiar with the um, Docker Compose syntax. So, um, yeah, as you can see, we have app 1, app 2, app 3, app 4, all engine X, all using some plain directories as volumes. Um, I just include some random data in there, so we have a little bit to back up. Um, so this is just a minimal configure, configured um, container, which will be backup because the default setting is that the Borg backup container will backup every single container running on the system. But you can, of course, change this. Um, then we have here um, a container which has the skip label set um, so it says please skip this path which is this volume over here so in the end um, there will be no backup because there are no volumes to backup on this container the next container um, just skips the complete complete backup by saying uh, backup false and the last one is pretty much like the first one, so it will be backed up too. Yeah, so after we have um, our running infrastructure and we have configured our Borg backup container, we can use Docker Compose to um, run um, our backup container. And then let's just see what happens. So as this is a pretty early state of this um, container image, there's still a lot of um, output. Um, but he's already done. So I will just scroll to the top and we'll have a look at what happened here. So first of all, he's saying, OK, you didn't configure this, you didn't configure that. I will just use my defaults. Um, this is cool for us. But it's just some like some security notice because the default is not to use encryption. Um, then he's saying, "Okay, backup is not a valid repository. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> not a valid repository. Um, so he will create a repository in this directory. This was he did. Uh, and then he's saying he's starting the backup." And then he skips our backup container, he says, because of label configuration. The same for the app 3, which, as we said, is all, um, as we've seen, is also set to skip by the labels. And then he's actually backing up our application number 1. 
and he will list all the volumes with um, the path inside of the container and the path outside or on our host system. Um, and this actually right here is the actual output of the borg create command. Um, the archives will be named by name of the container, which looks a little bit strange because this is um, Docker Compose default container name, um, followed by a plus and then uh, the date and the time uh, when the backup was made. So basically can do a backup every single minute if you want to. <laughs> Yeah, and the same thing is happening to the next container. Um, deduplication doesn't really work in this example because I used random data, so have to ignore that. And last but not least, we have our app2, which is also skipped by label. And he's saying, yeah, he's skipping this container because there's nothing to do. Um, this is the one we said, please skip this, uh, where we configure just skip this volume. So he basically tries to uh, do a backup on this container, see if there's no volume, okay, nothing to do. So yeah, that's it. Um, that's, that's basically the backup. So I've also put in a few other um, helper commands like um, the default one is of course is backup which will back up by default all containers but we can also say okay let's just um, let's just back up this one here again so and he will then just he should when we say okay back up the one one is the name of my container and the other is the um, parameter. So I'm sorry for this confusion. So and then he just backs up the single container. And we could also say, okay, let's please list all archives that we have. Well, there are three, it's app one, app four, and app four again. And yeah, let's say we want to restore our our application for. So we just take um, the name of the archive and say restore archive. And what, he, what he's then doing is um, he pauses the container as he says here, right here. Then he's restoring the archive and then just restarting the container and then you're done. You restart restored your whole container. Um, yeah, so basically that's it. These are all functions I've Im implemented right now. Um, you will find uh, at least a little bit of documentation on the Docker Hub and also on my GitHub, which might have a little bit nicer um, markdown um, yeah. So please let me know what you're thinking about this project. Um, I really kind of like it because it's really, once you have configured um, the basic stuff, you can just uh, press enter and it backs up your whole infrastructure, which is, gr which is great. So of course this is limited to, um, for example, local volumes and single host environments and yeah but for such a, such a small environment where you just have a single host for testing for example um, making quick backups in this way is pretty much awesome at least is what i'm thinking so uh, yeah let me know what you're thinking um, hit me up wherever you find node or node 360 and um, thanks for watching.